Hello, fifth graders. This is opinion lesson 11. And what we're going to do today is review how we can improve on as writers and what we can improve on and review what our next published piece assignments will look like because we're going to do another opinion essay. So what you'll need are a piece of paper and a pencil. You are going to write some notes today. You can use either your writing journal or a piece of paper. So when we write our second opinion essay, it's going to have the same structure as our first one. There's going to be an introduction paragraph, a first reason paragraph, a second reason paragraph, a counterclaim paragraph, and a conclusion paragraph, along with a properly done bibliography. Different opinion topic, but the same structure. So here's what our next assignments are going to look like for writing. You are going to be more independent this time. There's going to be less teacher help and more fifth grade independence. You are going to be in charge of your own writing. The teacher is going to guide you on what you should work on each day. So today you will work on your first paragraph. Tomorrow you're going to work on your second paragraph. But after today, there will be no more video lessons. We're always here to help you and guide you and give you tips and support. However, we're just going to tell you what to do, and it's up to you how you do it. So this is your turn to show us, your teachers, how you have grown as a fifth grade opinion writer. So we're going to talk about how we can improve as writers. So I want you to take that piece of paper or your writing journal and write this in the top of your page. Now, I know that uh, Miss Herman's class is using some of these videos along with my class, of course. And her and I have talked and we discussed some things that we noticed and what you guys can improve on as writers. So this is what we're gonna talk about and this is what you're gonna write about. So we need to practice putting the research into our own words. That's something that we can definitely improve on. So what that means is do not copy what a website says word for word. This is called plagiarism, and it is actually illegal to do. You're not allowed to take what somebody else said and claim it as being your own words. So instead, what you're going to do, if you haven't already, is put it into your own words and rephrase what the website said. And don't worry, we're going to go into this a little bit more, and I'll show you how I want you to do this. Second thing that we need to work on and improve on as writers is when we're quoting a website or professional, use quotation marks. We don't want any plagiarism, no copying other people's words. And we need to use professionals and quotes in our writing. A lot of you did use professionals and quotes, but there are some of you that didn't use any professional quotes. So if you can't figure out how to rephrase something that a website says or put it into your own words, then use quotation marks to quote it. If you ever use someone else's words from a website or Google, you must use quotation marks or else it's considered plagiarism and we do not plagiarize in fifth grade. Another thing that we can work on is keeping our paragraphs precise and all about the same topic. So make sure that your paragraphs are precise and that they stick to one topic each. So don't be all over the place talking about this reason then this reason in the same paragraph. Each paragraph should have its own reason and should stay on the same path. We're not just gonna be jumping all over the place in our thoughts because that doesn't help us. We're trying to persuade someone to think the way that we do. And if we're all over the place, it's going to be hard for them to follow and less likely for them to come to our side of the argument. So we need to make sure each paragraph is about a different topic and not multiple ones. And most importantly, I would say for sure with my class, I saw this, we need to have a proper bibliography. Follow the graphic organizer or use what the librarians gave you earlier this year. I know Mrs. Geckler and Mrs. Snyder have given you guys these pieces of papers that have a guidance on how to do a bibliography. Please use that because moving forward in middle school, high school, and college, you're going to be required to use a proper bibliography. So we need to start working on that now. So before we move on, pause this video and write these things down on your piece of paper or in your journal, because this is what you need to make sure you're improving on as a writer. I would say there's at least 75% of you can improve in at least one of these things. Okay, so let's first look at how we're gonna use our own words. So I found this cool uh, 
graph right here. And this shows you how you're going to use your own words. So basically what you're doing is you're paraphrasing. You're putting the text into your own words. You're avoiding copying the text word for word. You can rearrange similar text with similar words, or you can ask yourself if you included all the important points. So when you're paraphrasing, you need to follow this, putting it into your own words, including the main points, and avoid copying the text. So let's take a look at an example. So say I am researching about homework in schools, and this is what I read on a website. Rather than improving educational achievement, heavy homework load can negatively affect the performance of students. The stress of having to complete homework every other night can affect the student's performance in school. Students need to learn things in a classroom environment, but they also need to be able to spend time exploring other activities outside of school. Spend time with friends, go on family vacation, to name a few. Now, I can't just copy this and put this into my paragraph because Ms. Herman and Mrs. Toutfest are pretty smart. We know if you're using somebody else's words because I can tell when you're not using your own words because you don't talk like that. And your reader can also tell that, hey, this sounds like this would be something that somebody else said, not, not this person. So make sure that you're using your own words. So let's look at how I took this and I put it into my own words. I paraphrased it. I said, having too much homework can affect how students perform in school negatively. Students should learn important subjects in school, but they should also learn other things outside of school. Students need to learn how to explore other activities like spending time with family and friends, finding new hobbies, etc. So what I did is I put the text, this, into my own words. I didn't uh, copy it word for word. I just rearranged some of these words and I included all of the main important points because the main point of this that I read on the website was that having a lot of homework, it can affect your performance in school negatively. And it's important to learn other things besides what you're learning in school. So I made sure that I talked about that when I re-paraphrased it. So this is a good example of how you can paraphrase something and put it into your own words. It can sound similar, but it's not copied word for word. I didn't take what this person said and tried to put it into my paragraph and say, oh, this is what I said, because that is plagiarism and that's illegal and we don't do that. All right, now let's look at quoting a professional or a website. So say I'm reading about homework and this is what I find on a website. The most comprehensive research on homework to date comes from a 2006 meta-analysis by Duke University psychology professor Harris Cooper, who found evidence of a positive correlation between homework and student achievement, meaning students who did homework performed better in school. Now, I really like what this website said, and I'm not quite sure how I can rephrase it and put it into my own words. So here's how I can quote this website and this professional. A research study by Duke University found, and then I used quotation marks to, to show that I'm not, I did not say this. Someone else said this, but I'm not going to copyright it and say these are my words. I'm going to show that someone else said it. So I put quotation marks and I literally copied evidence of a positive correlation between homework and student achievement, meaning students who did homework performed better in school. That's how, if you cannot find a way to just put it into your own words, you can just use a quote. Quote the website, quote the professional, but don't try and say that this is what you said, especially if you're using big words like positive correlation. That's just not something that I see a lot of you guys using. So if I were to see that in your essay, I would know, hey, they're copying somebody else's words. Keeping our paragraphs precise, this is the other thing we can work on. So I like to think of opinion writing, and I heard this once or twice, as an Oreo. So think of Oreo, O-R-E-O. -E well, the O in Oreo stands for opinion. Your first sentence is tell how you feel about the topic. Your second sentence could be the R, your reason. Give reasons that support your opinion. And the E in Oreo stands for an example. Give an example or details that support your opinion. So like a professional quote or quoting a website. And then the other O in Oreo stands for tell how you feel about the topic again. So whenever you're writing a paragraph, think about Oreo. How can I stay on track and make sure I'm not jumping all over the place? Use Oreo, state your opinion, give the reasons, give some examples, 
and restate your opinion again. So let's look at an example that I've done. So I made sure I had a subtitle and this subtitle, sorry, this heading for my uh, paragraph essay was kids should spend more time with their families. In my opinion, so here's my O, instead of doing homework, children should be spending more time with their families in a positive way. Students and families need that family time to learn together, laugh together, and love each other. So here is now, so that was my reason right there, the students and families, and now here's my evidence, my E. According to the website, American Journal of Family Therapy, as homework load increased, so did family stress, the researchers found, this shows that instead of helping kids learn how to build better relationships with their family, homework can cause too much stress between family members. So that was me talking about this piece of evidence and how it helped support my opinion. And then I'm going to state my opinion again. As you can see, homework does not allow children to spend positive time with their family and can just cause too much stress for everyone. So I used Oreo to make sure I stayed on track. I didn't go off topic. I wasn't talking about multiple things. If I have this as my heading, that kids should spend more time with their families, then I should, my reader should expect to read how kids should spend more time with their families. I'm not just throwing a ton of information at them and going all over the place. I'm really staying focused. And here we are gonna talk about a proper bibliography. So let me show you some examples of what I was seeing for bibliographies. I was seeing works cited or bibliography and it was underlined as a title. Great start. However, I was seeing you jot down just the website URLs. That is not a proper bibliography. That's not what I expect to see from fifth graders at this point in the school year. A proper bibliography should look like this. It's where you use that graphic organizer or that piece of paper that Mrs. Geckler or Mrs. Snyder gave you as your librarian, where you make sure you are citing your evidence using, um, I think it's called the MPA format. So there's websites that you can use that will help you with this. That graphic organizer can help you learn how to type like this. We've done this for our informationals. So we should be doing this with our opinions. I am not going to accept just jotting down our websites. You need to make sure that you're doing the bibliography the way that it has been taught to you. So how can I do a proper bibliography? Use the bibliography graphic organizer. This shows you what to do. If you follow this graphic organizer, it will help you figure out how to write your bibliography so that your bibliography looks beautiful and correct like a fifth grade bibliography. So here's your assignment today. I want you to reread your opinion essay that you turned in. And after you're done, ask yourself, what do I need to improve on as a writer? Think about all the things that we talked about today where I, common things that me and Ms. Herman were seeing you guys do as writers and how you can improve on. Did you do any of those things? Are those things that maybe you need to work on and improve on? Once you've identified what you need to improve on and what you could possibly work on in your next second opinion essay, you're gonna choose a topic that your second opinion essay will be about. I know for my class, we jotted down three ideas. You're gonna choose one of those ideas. And then you're going to begin researching your topic. Save your notes on a Word document, a piece of paper, or the graphic organizer. Save the websites you use. Those are going to go into your bibliography, so it's important that you have those. Fill out the pre-writing graphic organizer. This will help you get your thoughts in order and figure out, well, what am I going to research? Well, what's your reason, one, for why you feel the way you do? What's your second reason? And that will help guide you for what you're going to be researching. And then finally, you're gonna show your teacher your research notes. I know with my students, I want them to email me or upload onto Teams their research notes. I wanna see what kind of research you did today. All right, think about those things that you can improve on as a fifth grade writer and get started on your awesome second opinion essay.